So by now, I'm pretty sure we've all done heard about the uh, the incident out in Dallas with uh, Botham John, the black male, age 26, getting shot by the police officer Amber Geiger, Geiger um, in his own apartment. She walks in. She basically says that she thinks it's her apartment and she ends up killing him. It leaves a lot of questions, a lot of questions, but something just isn't right. So you know how we do this thing. It's your boy, Johnny Mac. Honey? Yes, dear? Could you please pass me the great coupon? Is it that time again? Yes, it's time for the Johnny Mac Show. Officially launched in 2018, the Johnny Mac Show follows trending topics that are molding both the American and global societies together. We thank you for tuning in as usual, as the topics brought to you today are what you care about the most. Be sure to subscribe on the Johnny Mac Spreaker Show and check your local times and listings on iHeartRadio. And now, without any further ado, we bring you the man himself. Here's Johnny Mac. Officer is free on bond this morning after being charged with manslaughter in a bizarre shooting that left a black man dead inside his own home. Off-duty police officer Amber Geiger is accused of killing Otham John. The officer allegedly told investigators she mistook his apartment for her own and shot and killed him after she went inside. Omar Villafranca is at the Dallas apartment complex. Omar, good morning. Good morning. The Texas Rangers have taken over this investigation, but there are still a lot of questions. Like, what exactly happened on the fourth floor of this apartment complex? Why did a sheriff department almost 30 miles away arrest her when she lives two blocks from Dallas Police Headquarters? And why did it take almost three days until she was arrested? After an off-duty Dallas police officer allegedly shot and killed 26-year-old Botham Jean. You and I would be arrested if we went to the wrong apartment and blew a hole in a person's chest killing them. Jean family attorneys and local politicians railed against the Dallas Police Department for failing to make a timely arrest in the case. We've got to make certain that we're sure in Texas no separate standard as it relates to police officers when they commit these types of crimes. Get some uh, crime scene tape up here on the fourth floor. Dallas police say Officer Amber Geiger, who has been with the department for four years, told them she mistakenly entered Jean's apartment after her shift, thinking it was her own. She was still in uniform when she encountered Mr. Jean in the apartment. At some point, she fired her weapon, striking the victim. Details about what happened directly before the shooting remain unclear. All right, all right, all right. And that was from CBS News. Um, so I, I've been watching and listening and getting and watching everybody's different takes and opinion uh, on this situation. Now, um, the thing about this whole situation is it's so many open holes and questions. Now, what I wanted to do with this particular story, when I first heard about it, I wanted to let it marinate a little bit because it just didn't seem right. It just didn't make no sense. So I wanted to sit, let it marinate, and let more information pour out, let some more facts come out, And uh, it seems the more and more that the facts pour out in this particular situation, the more weirder 
this thing starts to sound and starts to sing. Ain't nothing but the devil. Uh, yeah. It, it's 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 real weird, man. It's 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 real weird. It it doesn't add up. There's a couple of things we're gonna talk about today. Um about this particular situation uh situation um like one thing for instance is the biggest question that you get and this is all over and i'm pretty sure anybody who's heard the story um is how did the woman how did the police officer get inside the apartment and for those of you who hadn't heard the story if you've been you know busy away or just hadn't paid attention to the internet or like they say sleeping under a rock Basically, what we have is um, we had a police officer, uh, Amber Geiger, Geiger. She was going home. Um, she ended up going into an apartment. And she saw somebody at the apartment and she killed them. Well, the flip of this whole story is that she was walking into this man's apartment. So that and she killed them. It raises a lot of questions because it, it, it raises a lot of questions because it's the first thing, you know, you say is, OK, well, how if, if that wasn't her house? How did she get in to the apartment? Number one. Number two, we learn and we find out all throughout the Internet and everywhere. You see that these people knew each other. They weren't just neighbors that kind of knew no they 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 knew each other real well they had pictures together pictures where they were hanging out a lot of people would even say they were possibly dating they were possibly dating that flips this whole ball game around from when we first heard the story that she just walked in, thought she was in the wrong apartment and she shot somebody, which is bad. But it get like I said, as the facts come out, it's, it's, it gets even worse. And it shows you something doesn't make sense because in the police report, um, in the arrest uh, affidavit as of uh, September 10th, which was, I think that was day before yesterday, they said that, um, she did. She say that it, it you know, in, in the arrest affidavit, basically saying that she walked into the apartment, saw the man, got scared. She shot him and killed him. Didn't turn on any lights. It was dark. Then tried to give him CPR in the dark, and then turn the lights on until she called nine one one. So let, let, let's get this straight. So we've got a trained professional police officer going into what she says is an apartment. She doesn't know who all is in this uh, apartment. And she says she thinks she's getting attacked when she sees this man. Who's in his drawers, by the way? Um, shoots and kills him in the dark. So she didn't look to see if anybody else was there, anybody else was around or whatever. She shot, killed him in the dark. Then say she tried to give him CPR after the fact. And then turn the lights on until she called 911. Then turn the lights on until she called 911. Damn. Now. What uh, Forrest Gump always say, I'm not a smart man, Jenny, but I know what love is. Stupid is as stupid does. Some stuff just, nothing about this whole situation adds up. In the news clip that we just played from CBS, you heard where that the, the, they were even confused because a whole different Police department and precinct came and picked her up. A, a, a different police department and precinct came and picked her up. Um, there's so many holes and loops and so forth in this that, um, I don't know, like I said, I'm going to give you my spin on it. Um, 
We definitely going to do that. And, uh, you know, yo, you rocking with Johnny Mac, the Johnny Mac show. Um, this is season two, season two of the Johnny Mac show. And what I'm going to do today, I'm going to get into some music. Let's see. I think I got some, um, I got some seven to grade. I got, uh, Mr. Main of the Maniac Riders. Um, I got some, uh, McKnight, uh, family by the McKnight. You know, we love that joint. So we, um, I got a couple of joints I'm going to do, um, and then come back and get this all going. Um, you know, and this show is, of course, is sponsored by, uh, Mac World Media. It's also being sponsored by JohnnyMac.com and also is sponsored by Kick Door. Get money in the latest fashion. Kick door. So K I C D O R dot com. Any of y'all go check that out. And uh man, let's get to some uh let's get to a little bit of music and then we'll come back and uh man, let's break down and see what is going on. What are they trying to pull over our eyes and why? All right, this that seven to great. Hello on the Ch Ch Johnny Mac show. Let's go. Johnny Mac Johnny Show, Mac Show bitch. bitch. 
you listening to the Johnny Mac Show, bitch. Ain't nothing but the devil. For all the hottest and the latest in street fashions, visit kickdoor.com. That's K-I-C-D-O-R.com. Kickdoor.com. We pledge allegiance to the front. Pledge allegiance to the grind. Fuck, fuck, fuck your team, they don't get it like mine. Keep doing it. We never take a knee when it comes to the work. You don't work, you don't eat, and grandma, you don't sleep until you are doing more than making ends meet. Keep doing it. Give me one way or the other. You hear me, boy. Living the American dream. Pledge allegiance to the grind. Have you ever been pulled over by the police at 4 a.m.? Drinking after a party? Is your landlord violating your lease? You going through divorce, adoption, or child support? If if, if, if so, then you need Legal Shield. Legal Shield gives you the law in your pocket through an easy to use app for just $20 a month. Always have 24 hour access to an attorney near you. If you need this, email me at macworld2020 at gmail.com. That's macworld, M-A-C-K-W-O-R-L-D 2020 at gmail.com. And put the law in your pocket. For all your custom printing needs, be sure to visit LeSureCustomPrintings.com. That's L-E-S-U-R-E, CustomPrinting.com. They got you on all your custom printing needs. T-shirts, stickers, posters, car decals. They got you on all that. Be sure to visit the website or on Facebook and Instagram. LeSureCustomPrinting.com. It goes down. I got that drop top pinned up. Looking nice, little fingers to them louds Cause we falling, yeah, it's about to go down, go down It's about to go down, go down Yeah, yeah I sit off a high to avoid it, catch me in the hay bag You ain't talking money, then that's not a conversation You're listening to the Johnny Mac Show, bitch Yo, 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 yo Man, so, uh, so we back, and, uh, man, I'm, um, uh, we about to break this down a little bit and talk about this a little bit, um, and in case you're just tuning in, or you're getting into this late, or whatever the case may be, um, I'm basically talking about the, uh, the murder of, uh, Botham John. The black male, 26 years old, that was murdered by the uh, white police officer, uh, Amber Geiger. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a real crazy situation. Oh, and before I do that, let me give a shout out. Uh, shouts out to uh, Casper Le Da Vinci uh, for the intro. That's him that you hear at the intro. Um, he came up with that. That's his beat, everything. He came up with the whole thing. Um like within a matter of minutes or whatever. So definitely wanted to give a shout out for that. And, uh, definitely, uh, people that good people over there at kick door, um, and, uh, Johnny and, uh, Mac world media. Hi. Now, um, <clears throat> none of this, like I said, none of this, like we were saying before, none of this makes sense. Um, uh, in this murder number one like i said well we went over a couple of things where we talked about the cpr we talked about she didn't turn on the lights when she was in the house now trust if if i'm thinking i'm in my house if i'm thinking i'm in my own house then maybe the light part could be uh, iffy but this is the thing he lived on the fourth floor and she lived on the third floor, I believe, or vice versa. Either way, she was on the wrong floor. He has a red mat in front of his door to let you know, you know, that that that's how his apartment stood out. It was so many different things that stand out about this that don't make sense. 
then you hear some people saying, well, she was intoxicated and since she was intoxicated, they don't want it to come out that she was intoxicated while she was in her uniform. She stopped and had some drinks the night, um, that, that night before she came out. Well, then it do needs to be known and y'all do need to point that shit out because it's not fair to the family. It's not fair to the, to the sad family members that's missing him. It's not fair to the community that he was a deep a part of. It's not fair to his church. It's not fair to none of his friends. It's not fair to anybody. Because he was not, no. now this is one thing, you know, uh, had he been out um, somewhere around a fight or just in the wrong area. None of these things are good things and good reasons, but these are the reasons that we hear all the time, right? This man was at his house in his drawers and, and is murdered in cold blood. Now, here's the twist to this whole thing. People say that they had been dating. Yeah. People said that they had been dating for a while. Now, people saying that, 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 that they, they had been dating. And it makes sense if she had a key, which is how they say she got in. And they also, uh, there was also talk in, in, in uh, that when she came to the, that, that, let me get my words right. There was also talks basically saying that she came banging on the door. Uh-huh. So she didn't just walk in because that's the part everybody tried to skip over. The police like, oh, well, she just, uh, she, she got shot going in the wrong apartment. Well, how did she get in the apartment? You can't just walk in anybody's apartment. I guarantee I'm not paying no rent if anybody can just walk in to my apartment. I don't give a damn neighbor, friend, whoever, nobody. And I don't want to walk into nobody else's for that same matter. If you can just walk into somebody's apartment, you know what I mean? I, I, I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want that. And the neighbor and she, her, her defense is he ignored the signs of, of, of whatever, whatever. So I had to kill. If he's in his home, let's say, let's say her, let's go with her scenario first. If he's in his home, not her home, nobody else's home. He's in his house, in his drawers. And somebody comes in the door. That's that that that's gonna shock me and have me all up and all. But I would also really be applaud. Ain't no telling what went on because they knew each other. So if you even if you're a police officer, but you might let's say they didn't even date. Let's let's not even go. Let me, let me, let's not even go speculate. But we can, it's, it can be agreed that they were some kind of cordial because there's plenty of pictures where they're just hanging out and got their arms around each other, and all cuddly and cozy. But let's just say they're real good friends. Whatever it was, not good enough to the point to where if I walk in and I'm just going to fire off and say, oh, I don't know who it was or this and that. Well, even if you don't know who it was, is that officer's protocol in Dallas to just shoot, walk in anywhere and just shoot? Not even checking the area, not seeing what's going on, nothing. You can't even say that the man is coming at you. Now, what, what sounds like, what sounds about right, the man come in, I mean, the, 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 she comes to his house banging on the door after having some drinks. Maybe they got some kind of a relationship going on. I mean, it's obviously stated or whatever the case is, whatever the, the relationship, friendship, dating, whatever. She felt the need to go to his house to talk to him at some, some time in the morning. He's in his drawers. He doesn't want to talk. There's so much covering up in this, though. I, what if there's somebody else that was there and nobody even knows that? We don't know. But he's in his drawers. He doesn't want to talk. She's banging. She's beating on the door. She's whatever, whatever, whatever. You better let me come in. She has the gun out and shoots him. Out of anger, out of being drunk. That could happen. 
right? Now, they say that the forensics, uh, I don't know if it's the forensics, but whoever was came to the scene and they tested her blood and alcohol levels immediately. But I haven't found where the response is or what the what on that was. They can blow your breath right when they pull you over driving in the car right then. And they can tell whether you've been drinking or intoxicated. So I don't see how that information out there. And maybe it's just me. Maybe I haven't, I just haven't found it, but I have not seen anywhere in my research. If she came back, you know, if it had alcohol or blood levels, or had alcohol or any drugs or narcotics or whatever, it just, there's a, there's a bunch of covering up going on. And that's the obvious. His family is missing justice. And, you know, and they're going to get a, get a, give her manslaughter as opposed to murder. Manslaughter as opposed to murder. Now, ain't nothing but the devil! I, I don't know. Um, then they said when she called the police, <clears throat> when she called the police, she had to go outside to check the address to let them know where to come to when she shot somebody. She said it was just a long shift. She was tired. She worked a 16 hour shift. She was tired. If you work a 16 hour shift and you're that tired that you can walk in somebody else's apartment and murder them, not walking in one apartment. If we had just walked into his apartment. That's one thing. This man ended up murdered. And that's that, that you know, <clears throat> and you mean to tell me you didn't know the address? If I thought I was at home, I would know my address. But okay, even if you don't know the address, or once you realize it ain't him and you call him 911 or whatever, um, it's still not making sense. None of this story, <clears throat> none, nothing of this story makes any sense to me. I'm sorry, I'm just going to be 100 and admit that this doesn't, none of this makes sense. None of this is clicking with me. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, and, 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 this is the police force. So, it's shedding a lot of light on the police force, but what could you really do anyway? Like, what what could you... Now, I wonder if it was a reverse situation. What if it was a black police officer? And we, I'm going to even flip it even more, not just the colors, but let's say uh, if it was a male cop who shot the female cop. What if it was a male cop that shot the female cop? Damn! You listening to the Johnny Mac Johnny Show, Mac bitch? Show, like, what? What would? How would that pan out? I, I, I wonder. I wonder how that would pan out. Um. None of this, like I said, none of this is going and they've taken, they're taking forever. It took like three days to even come up with, with, with where they at now. There's a bunch of cover ups going on. There's a man dead. There's a family mourning. And there's no answers.
Nothing except for a lie that just gets worse every time you look into it. Every time they just go, you go into this, it gets uglier and uglier. I mean, at least they do have her. So it's not like she just off the hook. We'll see how all of this plays out. We'll be watching this whole thing um, to see how all of this plays out and see see what exactly um, what exactly goes on. But I say she purposely did it. I say that that, that there's you know it's all over everywhere that she purposely did it. I'm saying I may go with that narrative. I'm not going to take no sides, and I'm gonna just be a journalist and kind of let the story unfold, but it sounds like to me this was something even deeper and it makes me wonder if she caught him there with somebody because maybe she called because there's reports that she went to a bar afterwards and she was seen drinking in her uniform. So that was one big thing. I'm willing to say that if she she could have been at the bar. She could have called him. Y'all know how I go. You call your, your man or your significant other, female, whatever y'all doing. And that person's not answering. And they supposed to be at home. They supposed to be asleep. And they not answering. Maybe y'all done got into it a little bit. And you thinking, oh, he so-and-so going to have somebody over at the house. And I mean, it's so many ways. It's so many scenarios to this. But there's the name, there's witnesses that are coming out saying they heard banging on the, the door. How do you get out of that one? Said they heard the banging on the door. Said they heard her beating on the door when she opened the door. I mean, when he opened the door, that's when she went in the apartment and later he was murdered. Which sounds about right. Because if you somebody beating and beating at my door that I'm trying to avoid an ex-girlfriend, a girlfriend at the time, I'm mad at, whatever. I go to the door, I'm naked. And first thing she's probably going to say, where, where the bitch at? Where's the girl at? Where the girl at? I know the girl is in here. I know that. And then, you know, you naked. If she's intoxicated, it gets heated. She has the gun still out because that's how she got in the house. She walked in with the gun on you. And she pulled a gun. And she ends up shooting you. Cold blooded, man. Cold world. Yeah. Cold, cold world. Um, I'm going to hop into another little joint real quick. Um, Because... They got these, I don't know why they always do this every time I do a podcast. They want to trim and do all of this. And so look, let me do this. Let's get some, uh, I'm going to get some music going. Let me uh, pull some stuff up and then we're going to go back into this story. And I got a couple other things I want to talk about too. So you're rocking with your boy Johnny Mac in the Johnny Mac Show. Let's do this family affair by the McKnight fam. Let's go. each other's company that's how we get down man mcknight ho you already know mcknight yo hey yeah that's he that's my family yeah that's my family nip that's my family yeah we gon' ride tonight that's my family yeah that's my family nigga that's my family yeah and we gon' ride tonight that's my family yeah that's my family nip that's my family yeah we gon' ride tonight that's my family yeah that's my family, nigga. That's my family, yeah. Here we gon' ride. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. Coming through your hood, sliding like my name is Ric Flair. Woo! Big night, ho. Yeah, that's my family. Yeah. Crank this heat in your whip and start jamming it. Good food, good drink, good vibes. Nothing like linking with the fam, ready to slide. You wouldn't understand. We cut from a different cloth, talk from a young age, how to be a boss man. I swear to God that I love my fam. Pledge of allegiance, raise my right hand, building legacies. 
that's what we do. Okay. Can the torch, man, we always stay true to the principles that we was raised on. Uh. Bought that money, big word, love phase on. <laughs> Big County, Carolina, up to Jersey. We man, we, we stay swerving. Huh. I love my I love family. My family. Yeah. You better know that's my family. Yeah, that's my family, nigga. That's my family. Yeah, we gon' ride tonight. That's my family. Yeah, that's my family, nigga. That's my family. Yeah, and we gon' ride tonight. That's my family. Yeah, that's my family, nigga. That's my family. Yeah, we gon' ride tonight. That's my family. Yeah. That's my family, nigga. That's my family, yeah. And we gon' ride the night. For me, it's always family first. All my family. We gon' be the best so we can bring out the works. Yeah. I don't play about my kinfolk. None of my family, nigga. When we get together, nigga, pull out that end up. Slap, slap, slap a nigga, chin, though. All for my kinfo. I remember when, yo. Way back then, though. Okay. Playing Nintendo. Man, we used to love that shit. Pants praying, asking God, keep us out of sand, though. You control your life, but nah. you can't control the weather. Nope. Turn on them, never. Uh-uh. Truest shit ever. Uh-huh. Whole nother level when it come to the fam. Yeah. You got a better chance fucking with Uncle Sam. Uh-huh. Put your ass in the jam. All my family go ham. That's now right. we got your baby mama saying, this is my jam. Yeah. I don't play by my bloodline. Leave a nigga flatline. Told my bro it's shine time like we on prime time. Okay. That's my family, yeah. That's my family, nigga. That's my family, yeah. We gon' ride tonight. That's my family, yeah. That's my family, nigga. That's my family, yeah. And we gon' ride tonight. That's my family, yeah. That's Man, my it's family, all love. love. I mean, That's my family. Every time we link up, we ride tonight. Man, it's like we never left each other. You know what I'm saying? Family. family. That's, family. family. That's what we do. That's easy. Have you ever been pulled over by the police at 4 a.m.? Drinking after a party? Is your landlord violating your lease? You going through divorce, adoption, or child support? If, 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 if so, then you need Legal Shield. Legal Shield gives you the law in your pocket through an easy to use app for just $20 a month. Always have 24 hour access to an attorney near you. If you need this, email me at macworld2020 at gmail.com. That's macworld, M-A-C-K-W-O-R-L-D 2020 at gmail.com. And put the law in your pocket. For all the hottest and the latest in street fashions, visit kickdoor.com. That's K I C. D-O-R dot com. Keep doing dot com. We pledge allegiance to the grind. I, 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 I pledge allegiance to the grind. Fuck, fuck, fuck your team, man. Don't get it like mine. Keep doing. We never take a knee when it comes to the work. If y'all work, if y'all work, if y'all eat and grandma, you don't sleep until you are doing more than making ends meet. Keep doing. Get me one way or the other. You hear me, boy. Living the American dream. Pledge allegiance to the crown. Pledge allegiance to the crown. To the to the to the to the crown. You're listening to the Johnny Mac Show, bitch. Damn. Yo, 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 yo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so we back. We back. Um, and again, this show, you listening to the Johnny Mac show being brought to you by Johnny Mac dot com, Mac World Media and Kick Door for all the hottest and the latest in street fashion. All right. Here's an article here. Um, this is from the New York Times dot com. Basically, um, where they basically say that claims by the uh, claims by Dallas officer who killed man in his own home. Is now raising new questions. Um, now, this article, this was from September the 10th. It says that an off duty police officer who fatally shot her neighbor in his apartment, claiming that she mistook, uh, she mistook the unit for her own, told the authorities that the door was already ajar when she entered it. Damn! Um, and that she shot him. After he ignored her verbal commands. Damn. 
Um, let's see here. Now it says that Officer Amber R. Guy, uh, Geiger, 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 um, who has been charged with manslaughter, could face additional charges uh, in a case that has led to accusations that the officer received preferential treatment. A debate about whether race may have played a role in a deadly encounter between the white police officer and the black man in his home. Ain't nothing but the devil! Um, it says that on Monday, um, the Dallas County District Attorney, Faith Johnson, insisted that the investigation into the death of the neighbor, Botham Shem John, um, 26, who had not ended and that her office could seek charges uh including anything from murder to manslaughter says we'll present uh, a thorough case to the grand jury so that the right decision can be made that's what miss johnson said at a news conference dallas has been gripped by the rising tensions since thursday um when the police said that officer greiger returned to her apartment complex after a shift in full uniform about 10 p.m. and shot Mr. John in his home. Now, Officer Geiger, who lives in a unit directly underneath Mr. John's, parked her car on the wrong floor of the parking garage and walked to what she thought was her apartment, according to the arrest affidavit. Uh, she inserted her electronic key into the door. So now that's the thing. Electronic key. Um which was already a jar according to the affidavit so if it was already a jar if the door is already a jar why would you even stick your key in it anyway you see what I'm saying why would you stick your key in it anyway <laughs> alright let's carry on um, says inside the dark apartment she saw a large silhouette that she believed to be a burglar that's what the affidavit said. Uh, she gave the verbal commands before firing the weapon twice, striking him once in the chest, the authority said. The affidavit did not detail the nature of the commands or how much time had passed before shots were fired. Now, while on the phone with 911, Officer Geiger turned on the lights and realized that she was in the wrong apartment, according to the affidavit. Um, the authorities took a blood sample from Officer Geiger to test for drugs and alcohol, but no results have not been released. Ain't nothing but the devil. Uh, let's see here. It says Lee Merritt, a lawyer for the John Mr. John's family, challenged several aspects of the officer's account, including her claim that the door was ajar. He said a witness had told district attorney's office that they had heard banging on the door and a woman saying, let me in, let me in again. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And it says, even if Officer Geiger did the mistake, uh, did mistake the apartment, which has distinctive, a distinctive red doormat outside, um, for her own, he said, there is no indication that Mr. John acted aggressively to make the officer fear for her life. Of course not. He's in his drawers. You're at his house. You're at his house. If you're not safe in your own house, if they can start just coming to the door, if somebody could just come to my door, accidentally come in my house and tell me they think I'm the damn robber and they kill me. Man. Uh, it says it would be irresponsible to rely on this extremely bizarre self-serving affidavit said Mr. Merritt, who has also questioned why the authorities did not immediately arrest Officer Geiger. Now, questions about the case um, was being handled only intensified after Officer Geiger was allowed to turn herself in to the authorities in Kaufman County, a mostly rural, uh, rural county southeast of Dallas, and to be booked at a jail further away. Uh, we don't want it. Uh, we don't want it lost on anyone that this had been a regular citizen. She would have never left the crime scene. Mm. Uh, let's see here. It says uh, Monday, Miss Johnson, the district attorney hinted at a split over the handling of the case between her office and the Texas Rangers, uh, the state's top law uh, enforcement agency. 
The Dallas Police Department asked the Texas Rangers on Friday to investigate the shooting. Mrs. Johnson said the uh, Texas Rangers coordinated uh, the booking of the Officer Geiger and recommended the charge of manslaughter. Um, let's see here. Oh, Mrs. Johnson said that she had a spirited debate <clears throat> with the Texas investigators on Sunday before they sought an arrest. Uh, we had our views at the end of the conversation. The Texas Rangers made the decision that it would be manslaughter, she said. I'm not challenging them on their viewpoint, and they did a great job. So, again, um, I'm not sure because I don't know how all the laws are, and the laws are different in all 50 states, all 50 of the United States. United. Um. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I know this is a this is going to be this is a sad ongoing story. Um, like I said, at least they got her with some, but I know manslaughter compared to murder, which is what this sounds like, is you know that's comparing apples to oranges um, in a way. But it is what it is, I guess. Right? I mean. What what else what 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 else could we do? I, I honestly don't know. All I could just say is, you know, you just really kind of gotta. All you can do is just be prayed up. And I know that sounds so old fashioned to some people and whatever, but that's the truth, man. I pray so much. I, I think you know you gonna you gonna need something because it's pretty. Uh, it's getting pretty pretty intense out there, man pretty intense out there um you know definitely praying for his family definitely hoping you know um that this situation gets worked out for him for the better uh definitely gonna be keeping myself updated on the story as the story unfolds because i want to know myself how all of this can you know actually play out and why did she make it as if she didn't know the guy at first when this all first jumped off to now it's all it's everywhere it is obvious that they knew each other then it makes you ask what other kind of relationship that they have when you got neighbors and every and witnesses testifying, basically saying, you know, testifying to the situation anyway, not the court, but that's, you know, stating that, hey, we heard this going on around this time. This is what our account of it. Um, I don't know. Um, some other quick news here around the uh, going around the globe. Um, now, this is back home in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. That says that the police, uh, this is from Fox 13. This was on September 11th yesterday. Said that the police are currently on the scene after investigating uh, shots being fired at a Memphis school bus. Now, according to the emergency responders, uh, Memphis police and uh, MF and Memphis fire, uh, fire department, they're on the scene. According to the uh, MPD, shots were fired at the school bus. One person, a 15-year-old girl, was hurt in the incident. And see here now on Twitter, uh, at M-E-M underscore police D-E-P, uh, the Memphis Police Department on Twitter, uh, said that the officers responded to a shots fired in the area of Rains and Graceland. Rains at Graceland, officers located a school bus that had been shot at Rains and Mill Branch, one female who was 15 uh, was injured, and it is unknown if the victim was shot or if she was injured due to broken glass. Man, Memphis is Memphis is their real deal. I be telling people all the time, man. Memphis ain't man. Memphis ain't ain't it, it, man. It ain't everybody. It, all right. Uh, it says that police said that she was taken to the hospital in non-critical condition. Uh, the officer told Fox 13 the girl wasn't shot. The dervish from the bullet uh, entering the window did hit her. Uh, the girl was released from the hospital and she is okay, according to investigators. Uh, the incident happened near the intersection of East Rains and Mill Branch Road uh, in Whitehaven. MPD officials said the bus was going north on Graceland near Rains when the bus driver heard a gunshot. They pulled into a parking lot and found one girl hurt. The bullet struck a window, and the students were from Fairley High School. Wow. Damn. That was the rival high school to my high school. My high school was um, 
the White Haven High School. Fairly High School was the rivals. That was the other neighborhood school. Um, my oldest kid's mother went to uh, Fairly High School. Man, shouts out to Fairly. Um, see here, the school bus company, Klein Tours, issued a statement. And they basically said that our thoughts and prayers are with the child and the family who was wounded. We'll cooperate with law enforcement and allowing them to do their job. We will assist them in any way we can. In the meantime, we hope the perpetrators are apprehended and uh, prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. <clears throat> um, this other pertinent information is, is made available. We will share whatever we have. Anyone with the information, they are asking you to call Crime Stoppers. Um, talking about that story for a minute, just because it's, you know, it pertains to my situation, man, that's, um, uh, that's my hometown, that area, that's the area where I grew up in, that White Haven, that's, that's what I am, I'm from, from the Haven, doc, um, and that's been the main reason that I haven't necessarily been in Memphis um one of the main reasons just because it's you know the crime was so bad um like I left Memphis I think it was 2006 2005 2006 something like that and they had just had Hurricane Ivan when I got to Florida I was in Pensacola and they had just got done with Hurricane Ivan they were repairing from Hurricane Ivan and uh, I got down there and you could just, I mean, I, 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 I had, I left because, you know, um, it wasn't nothing really going on. Crime was bad, but crime was bad. No bad than it had been everywhere else. So it really wasn't a big deal for that. And, uh, you know, I was just looking for something different, ended up moving to Florida and ended up just. You know, Florida just worked out good for me. Um, on top of that, I ended up having, you know, um, my second daughter. Now, my second daughter, I raised her myself, um, you know, for different reasons or whatever. not going to go into that today. But um, so in that process, I just always kind of, you know, it's always just felt like, well, it's safer to play it in Florida. And it's been some different times I've debated. Maybe, you know, maybe I go back to Memphis, you know, maybe I get back. And go back over these last 12, 13 years or whatever. It's been different times. I've been like, eh, I may just gonna go back. But then I cut on the news or I look at Facebook and I'm like, oh, I don't think I want to go back to that. Um, I mean, shooting into a school bus, like who in the hell is riding and will shoot into a school bus? But I mean, I guess so. Because I mean, I know kids do what they do. We all seen straight out of Compton where the... the, the um, you know, the OG gets on the bus and checks the kids because the kids throwing gang signs up out the window and all that. Like, yeah, we, we know that shit go on for real like that. Like, it ain't a joke. I mean, I get it. I get it. But at the same time, man, these kids, this this, this how real it is. They're shooting. They just shooting into the bus now. I mean, yeah, it hit the girl in the glass, you know, and that's luckily that's all that happened. But that's how Bucket is, man. They shooting into the to the to the school. bus. I mean, it's it's real. It's real. So, again. Another reason, like I was saying about the officer thing, about everything, man, you got to stay prayed up out here. You got to stay prayed up out here. Um, and with that type of shit and where they could just shoot into school buses and everything else like that, it make you say, well, damn, I don't even want to. Uh, I, I don't blame the kids for going to school strapped. What? I said, I don't blame the kids for going to school strap. It's almost like they have to. I'm speaking in this particular city. It's almost like they have to. And that's just the norm. Because people will shoot you on the highway, on the expressway. That's what they do. I mean, they shoot. Nobody plays. Nobody. Very few people fight. In Memphis, they, they'll, they, they probably shooting you. And that's real. That's not to be funny. That's not cracking no jokes. That's being that's being one honey, honey, honey done. 
It's definitely been a hundred done. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And you never know. Uh, excuse me, everybody. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, and, and you never know. You never, ever, ever know. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to hold you too long today. Um, uh, just wanted to kind of put in my thoughts and, uh, what I think about, the situation with the Dallas officer, um, my feelings, my views. And like mm-hmm. I said, I'm probably going to end up revisiting this situation as the story folds because it's a very interesting story. And I just kind of want to see where this whole situation goes. Um, also, coming up very soon, uh, how soon? I'm not 100% sure. Um, but very soon, I'm working out a couple of things. I'm dealing with, uh, I'm going to have a political. Uh, political kind of segment uh, of the Johnny Mac Show podcast where I'm going to be interviewing a couple of um, a couple of candidates, man, a couple of candidates who are running for different offices in Florida. Um, uh, you know, that that's running for office. So I'm talking with a couple of people, um, working some stuff out. I don't want to put, you know, spill no beans or nothing, but some people from the Democratic Party, a couple of people running for different offices in different parts of Florida. I will, I'm going to have a couple of them on here in a segment that I'm going to call um, Florida Blue. You see, the Florida Blue, I'm going to do Make Florida Blue. I think we're going to call it Make Florida Blue. But I'm going to do a segment uh, called Hashtag Make Florida Blue. And basically where it's going to, uh, I'm going to bring on a couple of, a uh, couple of guests, a couple of people running for some political offices. I'm going to bring them on and I'm going to let them talk and interview them. And basically I'm going to just, just let them kind of tell us, cause see the thing is, um, and I know everybody always give the, oh, well, you know, blacks, Democrats, whites, Republicans, whatever. I mean, I'm a Democrat, but I'm there for different, you know, for certain reasons or whatever, um, you know, and I recently just even did that whole party affiliation thing or whatever, whatever, because for a long time I wasn't even dealing with nothing. But I've researched certain candidates and certain people in this situation, like Andrew Gillum, um, the first black governor for Florida. Hopefully um, we're going to speak into existence. We're going to say that is what he is. Um, you know, I, I want to bring this segment in because. Politics play so much of a big part of our lives. I'm not even talking about on the big scale with 45 and all that type of crap. I'm speaking even on a smaller level. Um, once I became a parent, I start realizing how important it is to be a part of the school. Like when, when I had to start checking homework every night and, you know, asking what the lesson is and what did you learn? What did y'all eat in school? What did y'all do? Why do y'all don't have homework tonight or why y'all got all this these tests, but y'all not really getting to study nothing. You're, you know, the study is just, you know, some reading or some read 20 minutes or something, but it's nothing, you know, you start to wonder about this stuff. Cause I'm like, I remember when we was in school, we used to get piles and piles and piles and piles of homework. And I'm sitting in my room like, ain't nothing but the devil. You know what I'm saying? Like piles and piles of homework. And, uh, now they just, you know, sometimes they just read. I give my kid, extra stuff anyway now the school she's at this year is a lot different it's a private school so it's not on the city curriculum but even still um regardless of where the kids go it's good for us to get involved with and i know working parents we working we busy we try to keep them up with whatever they got going on and then we got our few minutes or two three minutes that we get to ourselves so we barely don't have time to really go through or Pay attention. The elections, you know, you find a lot of adults paying attention to is the, uh, uh, you know, the, the presidency, which those are big. But it's these kind of elections, like the one coming up November the 6th, that decides what your presidents can do when they are elected. This is what decides. This is the, this is how you figure out what laws are going to go into play. This is when you get to learn about amendments. And again, I know we're busy. So with that, I'm going to bring on a couple of people, uh, a couple of politicians running for different offices. So I'm already holding offices. So I'm going to be running for offices and just let them talk to us and let them speak about what they are, what their positions are, what it is that they're doing, 
why they do it. Not just a, you know, I mean, y'all know how I do it. My interviews, it's going to be, it's going to be dope. It's going to be nice. It's not just going to be, you know, come on and promote what you're doing or whatever. We want to get to know you. We want to talk, talk to, talk to us and tell us why we should, should, you know, why, why we should go out, why we should go get your vote. What is it that you're pushing for? What is it that I'm looking for when I go into that booth? And I'm not just even, I mean, cause just because I go blue doesn't mean, I mean, you can, I got, you know, Republican friends and so forth or, or people I know that Republicans and so forth. I even, you know, got friends that mm, vote for Trump, whatever. Um, but damn, <laughs> but it, but still at the end, seriously, on a serious note, um, I'm going to be getting that, um, make Florida blue. That should be coming up. That's going to be coming up within the next week or two. Uh, the next week or two or however, I'm just scheduling and getting the interviews together and uh, getting the times and stuff like that set up. And I'm going to get them on here. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about all of that. Um, I've been coming. I'm trying to think, do I got anything else that I need to? I think that I've got everything out so far that I need to get out. I'm thinking the next one of these is going to come around October the 3rd. Yeah, maybe like two weeks from now, like around the first week of October, we're going to be coming back. Um, going to be bringing on a guest, um, a guest homie of mine. This has been one of my friends for a long time. Um, we used to rap together. We, uh, you hear him on some of the songs I play when I'm playing in the podcast from the old days or whatever. He, um, he's kind of going in the philanthropist area. He does a lot of, you know, speaking and, 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 you know, give some stuff to think about or whatever um so it's uh it's my homie centel lines and um uh we call him j-dog but that's that's my bro we gonna uh i'm gonna get something together and i'm gonna get him on and that's probably gonna be when we gonna do we're gonna probably get him around like the first of uh the first of october and we're just gonna talk and i mean unless something else crazy comes up and we just gotta get on out here and uh and get some information to you. Uh, I think we're going to do that. And I'm going to kind of let this story fold. I think the next time when we come back. I should have more information on this Dallas shooter. Because the whole world is watching. We all want to know. Like you know. What, what do you do about that? Especially if you know. You're African American. You're trying to figure. Okay. They kill us in the streets. They kill us in the clubs. They kill They kill us everywhere we go. Anytime we're, we're, we're getting, being killed. Now they can just knock on the door. And kill us. Scary shit, man. But anyway, this is going to do it for your boy, Ch -ch -ch Johnny Mac in the Johnny Mac show. I think we are going to skate on out of here and I'm going to skate out of here with some Mr. Main and uh, Young Major Kappas till we meet again next time on the Ch -ch -ch Johnny Mac show. All right, y'all. Love y'all. Peace, love and hair grease. Let's do it. Cause you niggas like a tatter. I want them best, not a batter. These niggas snakes, I see they rattles. I'm on the air like a powder. I'm on the air like a powder. Smoking that gas in the sour. Smoking that gas in his louder. He know to be like some chowder. I'm saucing the fresh out the shower. I cannot fuck with the cowards. Cause your mates got the power. We fucking these bitches for hours. They just want to wait like I'm Howard. Got niggas that trap out the towers. They selling their juice in the flowers. All my life has been a house. I'm taking all jet like NASA. I cannot fuck with you bastards. I cannot fuck with you cowards. I just woke up in the castle. I just woke up in the castle. You niggas faking and rasping. I want that coupe that go faster. Most of my life in a house. I cannot fuck with you bastards. I cannot fuck with you cowards. Hop in the ghost and go cast. Might hop up in some that go fast. I'm a sensei, I'm a master. I might bless you like a pastor. I just woke up in the castle. Hey, I just woke up in the castle. I think that make these niggas mad. I got him pissed like a bladder. I got him pissed like a bladder. Yeah, I cannot fuck with yeah, you yeah. bastards. I 
cannot flow with yeah, your yeah. doubt. I cannot flow with yeah, your yeah. doubt. Yeah, yeah. I cannot flow with your doubt. My mama told me a long time ago, a lot of niggas ain't real off in this game. So watch out for niggas that's capping. Nine times out of ten niggas be lame. Come take a class from me. I'll show you how to move smooth off in this game. Call me Sensei Mr. Main. The way I karate, the beat is a shame. I can't fuck with niggas cause they on some shady shit that will have me trying to clear their name. I came in this world by myself so I'll be damned if I'm escorting niggas with chain. All of my life has been hassle though. I roll up the weed for the antidote. I ain't singing to the choir, but the sermon that I'm preaching give you Holy Ghost. Now I'm trying to hop off in the ghost. I guess these niggas really mad, though. When I let the drop it down on the castle, these niggas hating like a dragon, though. Puh, puh, bag away. The speed I'm going, don't get in my way. You might feel the power up under the hood and wind up. Be in the place. Milk. Johnny Mac Johnny Show, Mac bitch. Show, bitch. You listening to the Johnny Mac Johnny Show, Mac bitch. Show, bitch. Damn. Have you ever been pulled over by the police at 4 a.m.? Drinking after a party? Is your landlord violating your lease? You going through divorce, adoption, or child support? If, 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 if so, then you need Legal Shield. Legal Shield gives you the law in your pocket through an easy to use app. For just twenty dollars a month, always have twenty-four hour access to an attorney near you. If you need this, email me at macworld2020 at gmail.com. That's macworld m a c k w o r l d two zero two zero at gmail.com and put the law in your pocket.